apple had legs that lasted for miles, with a smile that lasted for days. Her presence in classes was unmatched. Each time she passed by, I was mesmerized by the subtle scent of her magical teacher perfume that was harvested in a magical land where hot teachers lay magically naked, frolicking in pages of Shakespeare and <laughs> Newton's magical theories. The best part about all this is that if I ever want to visit my magical land to see my magical queen, all I had to do was go to school. And although I had perfect attendance that year, I'm not sure if I learned everything that I should have in that class aside from the geometric curves of her ass. And although I was pretty, pretty freaking good at geometry, I can't attribute any of that to Miss Apple. Because she taught English. <laughs> and then there was Miss Ching. She had these thick wire frame glasses, sunken eyes. She never ever showed her skin, and quite frankly, I'm glad that she didn't. But she had the most amazing talent. Take any of her, to take anything that we were psyched on, and even the things that we were to teach those subjects made, that made us more educated and more excited than when we started. Yeah, Miss Ching, I had her in fifth grade, the only other perfect attendance year of my life, and though I couldn't stand her at first, I now realize it's because she was the first teacher to fully understand us. And she wasn't down to take any of our nonsense, but she was down to give us a real education. Instead of shoving curriculum down our throats, she empowered her students to be proactive in, le in our learning, and soon enough, a small group of us, we started to take after school to learn more from her. When we knew that there would be no specific subject, no grades, no limits, and no social pressure to conform or fit in. Because it was just me, Constant Pellegrin, Joe Nishan, Joe Welch, Mr. Ling, and Philip Rutaner. And together, we were like the breakfast club.